make the summer work for you from College Guidance Network's CGN Live Career Series. We'll get started in a couple of minutes. Tonight's format will be an interactive Q&A to help you understand how to discover and apply for summer jobs and how to develop skills that will last a lifetime. Joining us to answer your questions today are Robin Lady, CEO of Standout College Apps and former Director of Student Services at Chantilly High School in Virginia, and Louis Portillo, Regional Associate Director of Undergraduate Admissions Mid-Atlantic at the University of Rochester. Your host today is Michael Horn, author of From Reopen to Reinvent, Recreating School for Every Child, and co-host of the Future You podcast. To submit your questions, just hit the Q&A button at the bottom of the Zoom display anytime. For counselors in our audience, CGN School is the first video library for you to build capacity with your families, featuring only nationally recognized college and career experts with content translated into multiple languages. We've dropped a link to a brief video in the chat. See and hear directly from counselors who are now letting good content do more of the work. Go to collegeguidancenetwork.com to request a demo. We hope you'll join us for our two-part college kickoff for 11th graders and their families. On January 26th, we'll have a panel discussion to get you ready for the college exploration ahead. And on February 2nd, we'll look at the very important affordability aspect of that discussion. We hope you'll register for both events at collegeguidancenetwork.com. A recording of today's discussion will be posted to share with your friends and colleagues later this week with caption translations in several languages. And we'd love to get your feedback about this episode later in a brief survey. By filling out the survey, you'll have the chance to win a $50 Amazon gift card. Thanks again for joining us, and here's your host, Michael Horn. Welcome to CGN Live Career. It may be cold wherever you are. It certainly is where uh, where I am uh, today. We've gotten snow all day, uh, but tonight we're leaving winter behind as we are going to be talking about summer, 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 as in make the summer work for you. I'm really excited about today's conversation. My name is Michael Horn, and I get to play the role uh, of host this evening with all of you. And whether you're looking for a job to help your college application or to further your career exploration, or simply to build skills, or put a little cash in your pocket, or just because, frankly, working a job can be a lot of fun and intrinsically rewarding, the conversation tonight will focus on how to find and apply for summer jobs, as well as why they are valuable. And we have some amazing experts to help us on this topic joining us tonight. And first up, uh, Robin Lady. She's the CEO of Standout College Apps, as you heard. She's also a NACAC board member, and I'll give you the jargon and acronym police there. That stands for the National Association for College Admissions Counseling. And she's also the former director of student services at Chantilly High School in Virginia. We also have Luis Portillo, who's the regional associate director of undergraduate admissions for the Mid-Atlantic region at the University of Rochester. Now, before I go to them, a few items just of housekeeping. Uh, in your Zoom chat, uh, you can use the Q&A button, actually, uh, to submit any questions that you have. Uh, and we know that a lot of you will have questions. We'll also be using the chat box uh, throughout the evening. And you can go in there right now and share just a couple words about what you're looking for right now in a summer job or if you're a parent tuning in right now, what you're looking for for your kids or the questions that are on your mind, perhaps. And while you do that, and we get to hear from you, which is always rewarding for us, I want to share what we're going to cover in the next hour as we go through this evening. So first up, you can see the graphic that we're uh, going to put up here, but the big topics are going to be around the why, first and foremost, as in what is summer for? Then we're going to be diving into the benefits of a summer job. What are they anyway? We'll then dig into where to find a summer job. And finally, we're going to be addressing what are the different tips and tricks, really those practical, tactical things that you might employ to land that summer job as you apply. Now, I've got lots of thoughts on these topics as well. I won't lie from my own work as the author of Choosing College uh, and the host of Future You podcast. But frankly, I have a lot of questions. And I'm going to dive right in with our experts because I am very excited to learn alongside uh, both of you. So I'm going to turn to Robin and Luis now. 
and uh, start on that first topic around what is summer for. And Robin, let, let, let's start with you and then Luis jump in right afterwards. How, how do you think about what summer is for? So for me, I see summer as the opportunity to dip your toe in things. Um, could be things that perhaps are related to what you might want to study or you're endeavoring to do down the road. Um, but it also could just be um, a summer job that gives you an opportunity to interact with the public in a different way, be part of a team in a different way, uh, be held accountable, show up on time, um, perhaps even you know, deal or interact with, with a difficult boss or supervisor. Um, I mean, any job a student gets, um, gets them out, out from under their phone, out from under their computers and sort of puts them out working and interfacing usually in many cases with the public. Um, but it's just an opportunity. That's why, um, depending upon what you want to do with the summer, I mean, there's lots of summer opportunities uh, on college campuses for students to per perhaps, you know, learn a little bit about, you know, engineering or, or medical science or economics or the stock market or, um, you know, even, you know, psychology or sociology or, or journalism. I mean, there's just lots of opportunities for kids to, uh, before they uh, fill out an application and, 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 and declare sort of what college they're applying into with, within a university major in terms of major, um, dip their toe in other things. So I, I just see it as wasted opportunity if kids don't lean into it, right? I mean, just sitting around at Starbucks or playing Xbox with your friends or just hanging out at the pool, that's not productive. That doesn't grow you. That doesn't stretch you. So I think for, you know, certainly once you're, you know, finish your sophomore year, sophomore summer, junior summer, fantastic opportunity to sort of engage with your world in a different way uh, where you're not graded, uh, but you get feedback from a different, from a different perspective. Yeah, I, I echo what Robin just said, and also a, reju a rejuvenation process for my, our students, right? Um, our high school students currently, from so from freshman to sophomore year to even junior year, uh, do fall in into and out of interests, and it's uh, a time for you to reflect on what you may be interested in, what you uh, no longer are interested in, possibly switching or altering jobs or an internship, or like Robin said, uh, hitting up a college campus for summer programs. Um, I will say the job component of it also is a, a time for development. I think development in the student's opportunity and ability to communicate is, is grand um, and, and it's fruitful to do so because the student's gonna, like Robin said, interact with different people, interact with a difficult boss, um, where it's gonna teach uh, intangible skills <coughs> that a student's gonna to bring to a college interview or uh, potentially um, walking on campus and taking the lead in asking the questions when everyone else is a little bit shyer to do so. But I feel that the summer isn't just to jump from academics into jobs, because let's be for real, we are, our kids are 16, 17 years old, they, they need to have a revamp period. And I'm not saying take the entire summer to sit at the pool, but definitely, Take the, take the first couple of weeks of summer to sit by the pool and start polishing up your resume, um, finding different places to, to, to send your resume, potentially for a summer job or an internship. Makes a lot of sense. I'm, as I'm sort of reflecting on the answers, I'm, I'm hearing three big themes, right? One is prototyping sort of the different things that you could be or that you could get interest, really get those reps in. So that when it's time to make a commitment down the line, you have a lot of experience. You already sort of know what to expect. And is this, in fact, something you're going to be passionate about and develop into? That's the second one. Use it as an opportunity to, to develop. Uh, but then third, I'm hearing make sure that you don't forget that summer gives you an opportunity for restoration and rejuvenation. Uh, that can be critical as well, especially in this context of, of the <coughs> development and prototyping. Uh, these different uh, futures. But I, ge I guess that gets into where I want to go next, which is that's sort of like the answer of what is summer for. But I'm curious how you, when, when you have the conversation with parents and students and sort of framing how to think about that summer, what are the sorts of things that you're saying to them to maybe make it a little bit realer, right? It's not just sort of the the philosophical answer of what summer is for, but how are you helping frame it so that they can really uh, uh, grok uh, this this opportunity about how to think about the summer experience? Luis, let's start with you on this one. 
Yeah, the, the question I get the most uh, when it, in, in the sense of your, um, the way that you asked the question, Michael, was uh, summer programs on college campuses, right? Should I do them? Should I not? Uh, is it is it a way for me to kind of put the leg up in, in the sense of I really want to go to that college? And, and, and the real answer is summer programs aren't there to be used as a backdoor into that college. Uh, summer programs are there for an enrichment process um, to kind of dip your toe in different academic um opportunities to see if that's something you really like, to see if that's something you could see yourself potentially studying. And the hopeful part is that the you also receive some college credit that you can transfer into another school that once you do enroll into a school, you can take those credits with you. In the sense of college, that's the question that I get the most about the pre-college programs uh, and, and how, how that works. Um, in the sense of a job, I always tell parents, uh, especially the parents that are worried about what their students should be doing over the summer is, make sure that they're doing something that can help them grow intellectually and socially. Um, especially now, you know, we, we've dealt with two years of the pandemic where the social interactions of students ha has kind of, I wouldn't say flatlined, but it's definitely a little, it's definitely much more different than it was before. And I would say that any opportunity for a student to interact sociably um, in different settings uh, with different age groups I think is going to be very, very key in what that student does, whether it be a summer job or an internship or even the pre-college program aspect of it, because the social aspect, is, as, as much as we are social on our phones through social media, the face-to-face -face contact is where, as a society, we're, we're kind of slipping up on now. Robin, let, let me turn to you with the same question. So, you know, I'm thinking about um, this and, and I agree with uh, Luis around COVID, you know, I mean, to be quite direct, you know, last year, you know, when our kids came back in many places full time in person uh, or whenever they return, they seem to be pretty addicted to their phones. Um, and, and sadly, on a different topic, a lot of them had become a little addicted to vaping. Um, but to this point, I also found since the pandemic, I feel like parents are often working harder than their children. So when we talk about a summer opportunity, like who's interested, who's doing the legwork, who's doing the research, who's filling out the application um, in order to really benefit your student has to own that work. Um, and, and if they can't own it now, then you're going to find yourself doing the same work for them when it comes to apply to college, if, if that's what they endeavor to do down the road. Um, so I think it's just incrementally scaffolding backward design, what it takes to get a job. You know, where are the jobs? I mean, you know, most areas, there's a help wanted sign just about everywhere. I mean, I can go in any shopping center in the Northern Virginia area and I could probably walk in and apply to, you know, a job at every other, you know, shop or restaurant or whatever. Um, you know, maybe you need to work with kids to develop their, their advocacy skills to, you know, maybe do some resume or some uh, interview interactions with them. Um, I'm not saying you can't help them, but I think that the benefit for the student is that it's it, that they do the work and then they get the reward, they get the job. And some of our kids work year round. Let's talk about kids who are, are, are helping pay bills right now. Maybe what they need to be advocating for or learning to do in the summer is when do they ask for a raise? When do they ask maybe for some more responsibility because of the fact that they've been somewhere throughout the year and the summer they're available to do even more hours. So, um, you know, everything, like Louis said, it's about growth. It's about communication. Um, it's about, you know, conflict and, and communication and, and, and soft skills that, you know, we don't give grades in school and soft skills, um, but they are unbelievably important to success in college and success in life. And so why not start, you know, putting yourself out there a little bit to start to develop those soft skills um, and it, it can be especially hard for, for kids who are on the shy or introverted side, but I have found that some of those kids that I've worked with privately, they get a job at a grocery store and they chat with the same people who come through their line. And it's almost like they're a different human being, but it's because it's a different context for them. So even though they're introverted shy or being a barista somewhere at a coffee shop, like it's interesting when it's a stranger, how to see some kids really blossom. No, I think you're both raising some important points in terms of, and, and from my research, right? I think a lot about how do we help 
children uh, and students as they as as they move into teenage years and then into college, how are we really helping develop their life skills, their habits of success, uh, their critical thinking skills, and so forth? Not just the academics pieces, and and in many ways, summer becomes this forum to really uh, work those muscles around uh, what we don't get to get a lot of opportunities to do, unfortunately, in schools all too often. You know, Luis, as you talk about the social aspects, or Robin, as you talk about, uh, you know, taking ownership over your own job search and things of that nature, and actually doing the legwork and developing the executive function skills and agency uh, and, and a sense of self and things of that nature. These are really important characteristics to starting to d develop who am I going to be in this world and how am I going to contribute and it gets into the question I think I, I, I want to go to next, which is, um, if we're being honest, in, in most high schools anyway, uh, students have little to no guidance uh, from their schools on what to do over the summer. They're not getting that sort of feedback. We know nationwide, you know, the, the guidance counselor, college counselor ratio is often 400 to one uh, or thereabouts uh, in, in schools, but it's predominantly focused on the college question. And... As you mentioned, Robin, today's high school students, they're still dealing with the disruptive effects uh, of the COVID pandemic and so forth. And so, I, Luis, I, I'll start with you on this. I, I just love you to talk a little bit about what you've seen in terms of the impact of COVID on teens, in terms of their personal development, mental health and so forth, uh, as, as they're moving through high school and into college. Yeah, of course. Thank you, Michael. Uh, I, would, I would say in, in the terms of mental health. Um, this year, I was actually on a panel with some other colleagues um, over the last couple of days, and we were talking about uh, reading season, because that's what we're in right now in January for admissions people. It, it's um, reading season, we're making decisions, etc., and reading applications. And you can definitely tell students are, are still, you know, bandaging up the wounds of COVID and, and what that that did to them mentally and the isolation aspects and um, the lack of opportunity to kind of vent that out in, in extracurricular activities, whether it be sports or, or something of that nature. Um, but the, the unfortunate part, and I try to remind students of this, especially when I get the over anxious student, it's like, well, you know, Mr. Portillo, I didn't have the opportunity to do, th to do this. And I don't know if that's not going to make my application not competitive. And, and then that just snowballs, right? And it's a continuous snowball. And a lot of students are going through that. I always have to remind them that we, you know, we are all people, um, especially on the college side. Uh, there's this myth that we are this, these massive titans that um, I always laugh because it's, it's part of the Lord of the Rings where he's like, you shout out pass. And it's like, no, no, please come through. We want you to come through. Um, and, remember that we are humans and we as a world dealt with this, not just a portion of the country or a portion of the world or a high school in specific, it was the world. Um, but as a student is starting to develop their application in, in, in the sense, I'm not saying don't write about the impact COVID had on you, but make sure that you are writing it in a sense that you're able to portray how it changed you emotionally socially um, so that when we're reading it we understand exactly where you're coming from because i always tell students all the time we all weathered the storm together but a lot of us were in different boats some of us were in yachts and able to maneuver the the storm of the, uh, the pandemic easier than that person um, with a life jacket that was literally treading water the entire time regardless of what route you or what format you were kind of taking on the pandemic understand that you will have some that is empathetic and reads that with beyond the scope of of just the human eye so um i, I just want to reassure the students that are out there watching do know that we understand um that different things happen for different people but let us know about it but when you let us know about it also understand that we are going to see a lot more anxiety and stress and um, I, I, sadness sometimes, and it's unfortunate. Um, and when you're expressing it, just remember 
we are human on this side too. And so we will uh, take that uh, with, not to heart, but we will definitely consider that throughout the entire process of the read as well. So um, I would say that was on the college side, that I've, that's what I've seen as the biggest impact in the applications. No, that makes that, that, that it makes sense and it's interesting and it's something that actually harkens back. And I just want to put a fine point on what you just said, Luis, which is, you know, the people reading the essays that are looking at the applications and so forth, the, the admissions officers, y'all are human as well. You have families, you have challenges through this as well. And you get at a deep level what it's like to go through the stress of the college application process and the like. Um, and what it means uh, on the summer search and so forth. And, and I think uh, it's a good segue in, into the question that I want to go into next, but I'll, I'll call out, there's a question in, 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 in the Q&A around, my child doesn't have motivation to find a job or internship on his own. How can I motivate them? I think the flip side of that same question is, is the one that I, I was thinking of asking, which is how do you help students find the balance between work and relaxation and that restoration rejuvenation that we talked about earlier in the summer. And uh, I, so I'm sort of curious how you think about both sides of that coin. Robin, let's start with you on this. Well, it's a great question. And I guess my first, you know, it, 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 it's all in context, right? I mean, is your student being, is there, are they motivated in school right now, right? What, what are they motivated to do? Because um, I do think that, um, you know, parenting is tough these days and, um, we're very uh, worried about our kids and their mental health and their their strength and their fortitude. Um, and so, you know, sometimes there's a yin and a yang around how hard do we push, right? So, you know, I, you know, I I I sort of came from a family that uh, had some high expectations and had some pretty clear boundaries. Um, and you know, uh, wasting my day was kind of not an option, but. Um, but, it, but for today's kids, I mean, you know, um, not being among peers, being behind a mask, a lot of that impacted um, self-esteem and, and advocacy and strength and confidence. So, you know, um, it, there, there are a variety of ways to approach that. I don't know whether or not a lack of motivation could also mean uh, a student is battling with some depression. Um, you know, I don't know whether or not there needs to be some, you know, mental health intervention. There's also some great people who do fantastic executive functioning coaching. Again, that, that comes with a, with a price tag. Um, but also as a parent, you know, I find, you know, if, 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 if kids have, a, have something planned on a Saturday or Sunday, then they have to get up at a reasonable hour and have to go and endeavor to do something. Um, you know, again, motivation is, you know, if you sleep till noon, you could sleep till four, right? Um, so I, I, that's just a tough question, you know, as a parent, I, I think that maybe, and, and this works sometimes too, is have you done some tours on college campuses where kids can see what are they working towards? What am I, why am I taking these classes in high school? Why do I want to get a job? What, why do I need to develop these skill sets? And maybe if that motivates them as an end goal, you can backward design that. And then they'll incrementally, they'll, they'll sort of see the different steps they need to take to better position themselves when that time comes for their application. Yeah, I, I would say there's no right answer for this because every child's going to be different and how you parent is going to be different. Um, I, I don't have children myself, but I, I do remember a time when my, my mother, um, how she motivated me was any birthday money that I received, that's the money that I used to spend throughout the year, et cetera. But at, at a certain point, she actually took that money and put it into a, a CDI to start saving for books and, and things of that nature for college. And she told me, if you want spending money, you need to go out and make that money. Um, and so that was my motivation was I, I growing up, I used to love shoes. I, I, I'm, I'm packing up my house now to move. Uh, I realized I, I had a shoe addiction. And so <laughs> that uh, motivation to have the nicest pair of you know, Jordan's at that point in time, that was my motivation, but that, that was me, right? My sister was very different. My sister was more so um, an opportunity to get out and just talk to people because she was very, very talkative. So my, my mom saw that as, as a different motivating, like, look what you can do by being a summer camp counselor. Look at all the people that you can impact, et cetera. Go out and do it, right? But for me, it was more like, look, look at the shoes you can buy if you go, um, if you go to work. But that's going to be some self-reflection between the parent and the student. 
uh, on how you should motivate your child, kind of what Robin says, finding that balance between uh, pushing too hard and not pushing hard enough um, and seeking ways to to assist them in that uh, is, is something that there is no specific right answer. There's no perfect formula for it. So it's really going to be some uh, trial and errors in that aspect. But I, I do love the idea of taking them to summer college or some college tours to see what they would be working for. No, I think it's a really important point. Um, and I, I, it speaks to something that we talk a lot about in the Choosing College book, which is understanding the why for your child and not imposing your why uh, on top of them, but also acknowledging as the parent that there's this thing we call, and we, we have this concept in the book, the parental discount. Anything you say to your teen is going to get discounted because you're their parent and that's just how that works. And so finding uh, someone else that they trust that can maybe have that conversation and you can exchange the favor for, uh, for their kids perhaps, uh, down the line or, or little, little tips that, and again, not to impose a vision, but more to figure out, Hey, you know, is it those air Jordans that you want, right? That, that, that's going to motivate you to get that job. Great. That's your motivation. Let's find something that, that, that accomplishes that. It, it goes to a question we're getting, uh, in the Q and a and something I wanted to ask as well, which is, you know, there's all these questions about what kind of job, what's the right job, internships and so forth, uh, relaxation. And is there anything wrong with the, you know, the good old fashioned job of scooping ice cream or lifeguarding or, or things like that? How, how do you see, how do you both see uh, those sort of stereotypical traditional summer jobs? And how do you think about a job versus say uh, an, an internship or something that is maybe more of a uh, an academic flair to it, even a campus academic program as, as, as uh, folks are making these decisions. Robin, you want to take this first and then uh, Luis come in right after? Sure. Um, well, first of all, I think scooping ice cream could be one of the hardest jobs that one would ever want to do as someone who can't stand to be sticky. Um, and you certainly probably won't have time to be on your phone if you're working someplace that's kind of got like a you know, a revolving door of people. Um, and I think that's a big thing, right? I mean, I think that when you walk into an establishment of any sorts and you see a kid on their phone, it's a turnoff for the for that particular, you know, restaurant or, or ice cream shop. So, um, I mean, you know, I had a daughter who lifeguarded several summers, uh, taught swim lessons, you know, it led to nannying um, for specific families. And, you know, ultimately all of those skills um, helped her in the long run. Um, you know, she did change majors and moved to elementary education, but all of that played into, you know, what she wanted to do. Um, so I don't think there, there's not a single bad job out there, you know, um, you know, kids who work at country clubs and they, you know, hit, like haul, you know, golf clubs for people and they wash their clubs and, you know, they're, they're, again, that's, they get tips for that. So sometimes, you know, I, there's not a bad job. Um, and then when it comes to sort of the, the college situation, I think it depends, right? I mean, at the end of the day, colleges want to know what you do when you're not in class. They want to know how you spend your time, right? So, you know, if you're in, in a privileged situation where your job is school and you have all the supports in the world, when there's a higher expectation of perhaps what you take and, and, and what grades you might, you know, your return on, you know, your commitment to work, I mean, to schoolwork. But if you're in a situation where you have to work a job, colleges care about that too. And they understand you can't take as many AP classes if you have to leave school at 3.30 and be at a job and don't get home till 10, or if you have if child care. Um, you know, when it comes to selective schools, I think that's where you're talking about some difference makers, right? Um, but even then, you know, I have found that a lot of selective schools, when a kid, you know, through the components of an application, uh, appropriately shares their story. And if their story is, they couldn't, they didn't have the money for certain summer opportunities or they couldn't afford to do them because they had to work to bring income in. They're not less admissible. They're not less, you know, interested in that candidate. So, um, but if you, you know, if you're in a situation, and here's the thing I always work with my private clients. If it's going to be engineering, nursing, architecture, certain things like that, you kind of have to apply into that particular program. So if you don't know anything about engineering and your school doesn't have any pre-engineering courses or, then you probably need to figure out if there's a way to, for you to do a one week or two weeks sort of exposure to that to say, is, is engineering something I really have an interest in? Uh, similarly with architecture or nursing, as you could fall out of those into a college of arts and sciences, but typically if you go to college 
and you apply in a liberal arts college or a college of arts and sciences at university, you can't jump into engineering or architecture or nursing. So there are certain pre-professional paths that I think you have to have a little bit of exposure to, to see if that's the path you want to go down. But at the end of the day, and I welcome Luis to talk to this. I think universities, they want, they're going to, they're going to read you as an individual person. They want your story to come through. If they do a whole list of review and you have places for essays and, and, and to share your voice, um, what they don't want you to do is sit around and do nothing. Um, and at the same time, you need to have that life balance. And, and that's why a lot of times uh, students who are physically active, whether it's dancing or theater or sports, often are pretty emotionally healthy because there's that, there's that release. So I think colleges do pay attention to, to the activity level of kids, um, which goes to the rejuvenating and, the, and, the, and so downtime for some people is a good workout. Yeah. Ditto. Um, you know, I, Robin hit it nail on the head. I was, I was a first generation Latino college going student. Uh, my mother was an immigrant here. And so um, it, was, it wasn't more so, oh, let's go to apply for this summer program or summer pre-college program. It was, uh, let's find something to do over the summer that keeps you busy, whether it be camp, whether it be uh, being a camp counselor or working, et cetera. Um, and yeah, from the college side, we are looking at what you're doing outside of the academics that builds you into a more robust individual, right? Um, what type of skills do you have in the sense of um, being dependable, um, <coughs> having respo being responsible? Um, and it doesn't have to be this grand job or internship where you have to be there every morning at 5 a.m. It could be the most basic job of, hey, uh, mom, dad, I know you are working over the summer. And instead of, you know, spending it on child care for my younger brother, who's eight or nine or 10 or, or you know, at, a, at an age where it's appropriate for a 16, 17 year old um, to, to watch their younger sibling to, to really take the lead in that sense of, you know, well, I'll, I'll provide different activities for my younger sibling um, that I wish I had, you know, whether it be through creative, um, creative writing time or uh, arts, uh, fine arts and arts and crafts time, things like that. I remember for from the time I was 10 till I was able to get a job at uh, 14, I was taking care of my younger sister who were six years apart. So it was one of those things that Mom would go to work uh, and I would make sure that my sister had breakfast. We would go to the pool. Obviously, the responsibility and the dependability of me being able to watch my sister throughout that whole, whole time really showed um, showed in the aspect of when I actually applied to my first job that I am dependable, that I am responsible, that I do have these soft skills that don't look grand um, when you put them on paper, but in reality, a true manager or even a application reader can read between the lines that you have these attributes that make you a better person. So, yeah, I think that's where I come out as well on this, which is that you think about all the skills that you develop, whether that's caring for your, uh, you know, your, your, your younger siblings or scooping ice cream or whatever else you think about what you're developing in those social habits and those job ready habits of showing up on time, knowing how to act in a workplace, knowing how to treat customers, how to interact with them. All of those things are productive skills. And frankly, what we know from employers on the other side is they say most of the college graduates all too often, they don't actually have those skills. And so if they can develop them, uh, in the summers, that's a good thing for the life question. And frankly, the colleges like hearing that too. And, and Luis, I, I think, you know, that's something when I talk to admissions officers, they say one of the biggest misconceptions is that we want, you know, the high charging academic programs mm -hmm. and, you know, going, you know, guns blazing all the time on, mm -hmm. on can I out achieve you and, and my peers and so forth. And actually, you know, taking that summer job, you know, Co coaching swimming or whatever it might be or caring for your you know siblings that actually has value and particularly as you pull that narrative into it to show how it furthered your development as an individual that's not it's not only not something you're going to get penalized for it actually these days it might be something that helps uh, you stand out and and I, I guess where I want to go next is Luis just very explicitly what do you see as the value then of a summer job when you're having that conversation with, with parents and students? 
the value is growth and maturity, right? Um, that's the uh, unwritten value, but obviously income, um, the, what, what it says on the screen uh, currently with um, social skills development, face-to-face -face interactions, et cetera, those intangibles that we talked about, the soft skills that we talked about a little bit earlier, uh, and then the opportunity to, to learn to be employable. Um, I, I read somewhere, you, to be employable, you have to be able to take constructive criticism. And a lot of our students these days um, haven't heard the word no in a long time. So it's really, really important for them to, to, to get that another soft skill, in an, like an unwritten skill, uh, that taking a, a, a no or, or in, what I say to my students, they understand what I say, taking an L um, in a constructive way is really going to help them mature. Robin, let me turn to you on the next question because I, we, we've tossed around this phrase, life skills or soft skills or habits of success, all, all these sorts of phrases. They're sort of referring to the same thing. And you saw it in Luis's slide around uh, life skills. I, what exactly are the life skills that so students are developing in, in these summer plans, uh, these summer jobs? Sure. Yeah. I mean, uh, collaboration. Um you know, um, you know, basic, uh, you know, nowadays, a lot of schools have got these um, movable deadlines or rolling grade books. So, you know, showing up on time and a deadline being a deadline is kind of movable in a school environment, but in a work environment, that's not the case, right? You're supposed to be there at eight. You can't show up at 8.15 um, because then you're, you know, you know if, if you're needed for an essential thing, you've, you've held down the, the collaboration or the, the getting ready to open or whatever. Um so yeah, conflict resolution. I mean, it, you're interacting with the public, um, and you're 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 not getting a grade. Um, obviously, you're hoping you're getting a paycheck, um, but you know the, you're, you're just in school. We grade you on all these other things, but we can't grade those. You know, being a global citizen, embracing diversity, um, you know, interacting with someone who may have a disability and can't access your ice cream shop or do whatever, like. Um, you know, how do you interact? How do you respond? You know, how do you diffuse a situation? You know, um, how do you stand up for yourself? When do you know how to bring your manager in? Um, you know, um, where's your threshold? And uh, I just think it's, it, it, the list goes on, but the soft skills are just, you know, um, you're there without a, you know, calculator and without any notes or a textbook, right? I mean, it, it's you and whatever happens that day and all your abilities and your skills around managing. It's a good way to say it. Um, Luis, I, you know, part of this, right, is uh, there's a lot of concern about getting into the college of your choice or getting into the career pathway that you desire. But there's the other side of the coin, which is, are you successful once you get there? And that's something colleges think a lot about, increasingly so. Uh, I, I think at the University of Rochester, your graduation rate is around near 90%, if I'm not mistaken, but nationwide, you know, roughly 40% of students won't graduate from college within six years. So this college success <laughs> equation is very important. I'm just sort of curious, over the course of your career, have you seen any patterns in terms of success rates of students uh, who have worked in summer jobs versus students who have maybe never held a job at any point in their life so far? So the, the, I wouldn't say I've noticed any correlation between the two, um, because obviously in the admissions world, once they apply and get in and you stop hearing from that student, normally it's no news is good news, right? Uh, they, they go to the resources that they have on campus, whether it be through a career center or a writing center, et cetera. Um, but what I do notice, especially with my, like my tour guides and um, uh, co-athletes, et cetera, and, students that are able to work on campus or around campus while they're in school allows them to better time manage their skill, time manage um, their day uh, in the sense of how do I prioritize schoolwork and then uh, actual employment and then so on and so on. And so I think Robin said it earlier, students that uh, are involved in more, whether it be through dance or athletics, uh, seem to have a an easier mental health um, or a better mental health aspect to, to their life. The same thing goes for uh, maintaining a job, whether it be working at the bookstore or the library on campus where work study plays a role into how you are 
um, able to time manage as you go through school. I think that in itself helps students graduate because they're investing more time into the institution, but also learning to prioritize that time, right? Because we all know college can be a, a whirlwind of independence when you first get there of, you know, wow, I only had two classes today. I'm going to go take a nap or go play Xbox or whatever. But if you have something else to do upon that, what we have seen is that grades get better because it goes back to um, time management. And if you look at your high school student now, if they're involved in some type of sport or a job, whether it's seasonal or not, you're going to see, and you see this quickly, that their grades are better during that sports season because they have to prioritize time. Yeah. And it just goes to show those life skills pay off in academics as well as future success. And I think it helps address one of the questions uh, that came through around kids who play sports uh, for much of the summer. I, I want to turn to a, a, a different question, Robin, which is the jobs outlook for teens specifically for this summer. What are we seeing on the horizon right now? I think it's fantastic. Um, I think that, uh, you know, there's there. I mean, again, I'm in a, you know, the DC metro area. So um, there's never a time that I couldn't be somewhere and see a you know, a help wanted sign. So, uh, and I think it's because um, like I was just speaking with, um, you know, recently with, uh, with, with a friend whose son had gotten a job and, you know, in within a month had lost the job and, you know, she finally went into the establishment and sort of met the manager and it, and what the feedback was is, there just wasn't a lot of hustle, you know, it's like, yeah, if I tell you to go do X, Y, and Z, he'll do X, Y, and Z. But a big word in the world that kids need to learn is initiative, right? You know, uh, an initiative is not being asked or told what needs to be done, but getting a sense of what needs to be done and just doing it. Um, and I think that whatever job you're in, I mean, if you're a lifeguard, you know, you know, has anyone collected the dirty towels? You know, has anyone gone and got, fr you know, fresh towels or is anyone paying attention to a spill that might, I mean, there's this thing where it's like things can happen and you can go, eh, not my, not my job, not my, my job description or initiative. And I, and I think that that's a big thing our kids need to learn um, is to take initiative. And it's the same thing in their own learning. You take initiative in your academic work, right? I mean, you know, when you say I didn't understand something, well, then did you go find the teacher? Did you email that person? You know, did you use your flex time? Did you, did you stay after school? I mean, you know, you know, sort of playing the what was me, that's not going to get you anywhere in life. Um, and I think initiative is a big thing. I and mean, we, we've talked about it even with, you know, when I was, you know, you know working in public education, um, that there were, you know, certainly professionals who, who now had, you know, professional jobs who didn't get the concept of it. Right. Um, so, I mean, that's, that's one thing I would say is, um, that, that's a big, that's a big deal, you know, learning to, to take initiative um, and which also leads to responsibility and collaboration and teamwork and, you know, Hey, we're all in this together. I, I, will, I do want to add and piggyback on that, Robin, the students that take initiative and show that they can do work on their own, they have more ammunition to go to the manager or the boss and say, Hey, can I get a 25, 50 cent raise? Cause look at all I've done without you having to coach me through it. Um, right. and, and then you build up on that as well. Perfect. So I'm curious. Let, let, let's stay on these um, uh, on this track, Robin. Around uh, if if, if the uh, outlook for summer jobs is good, what are you seeing as some of the most popular jobs uh, for teens right now? And and then I, I I'd love to go seamlessly right into how can students actually find those jobs, be they paid or volunteer. So again, I mean, I think Google is your friend. You know, Google searches. You know, for you know, jobs in the, you know, f you know, food service industry or jobs in retail or jobs in, you know, I mean, you can do that, but also if you have an interest, let's say you have an interest in perhaps, you know, going to the medical field, you know, maybe there's, you know, you could walk into, you know, or, you know, ophthalmology, there's nothing wrong with walking in or, or reaching out to, uh, you know, a doctor's office and saying, Hey, listen, like, you know, um, this is an interest of mine. And, um, you know, I'd love to be in the space and, and hear the conversations. Is there any possibility I could work as a receptionist or is there anything I could do um, in, you know, in the, in the, in the office? Uh, you know, I, I think, you know, really, and, and that part's hard, right? Like, like that's a more advanced kid. So I think that 
if you're getting your first job, um, I think for kids, those tend to be lifeguarding pools, um, summer camps, um, working in uh, a lot of kids work in um, the food part, uh, concession stands, you know, at pools and, and they're doing like, you know, they're cooking or summer, you know, bus boys or, you know, I think, you know, I really, if you have an interest, you could probably find places that have, op that have opportunities for you to get a job. Um, but I do think that if you want to have a specific type of experience, you can also try to go down that road as well. And love to get specific on sort of where students can find those jobs, the paid and volunteer pieces, Robin, just to stay, just to stay with you on, on, on that question of, of how do they actually find these opportunities and where does Google come in, in, in into the equation, you know, to, to help them search for these things and so forth. Maybe the opportunities that aren't just walk up to the nearby retail store or the nearby pool or whatever it might be. Well, it's interesting you ask that because I have, I have found in dialoguing with different, you know, um, businesses that, you know, they actually prefer a kid to walk in to their establishment and ask for an application or to speak to a manager to inquire about a job. Um, they get sometimes people who complete things online um, and then they might do, respond with an email and then there's not a prompt response back. So if you, if you do some kind of electronic application because you found something through the internet, then pay attention and read your emails. Um, and pay attention to read your text or, 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 or what have you. Um, but, but again, I, I think that, you know, it's incumbent upon a kid or if a kid can go with a dad or a mom, you certainly can do some searches together. You can also go into your town or, or, or the area and walk around and, and you can also engage in some dialogue. I mean, you know, there's different um, tools out there too. Um, I mean, you know, around what your interests might be. I mean, if you have Naviance, there's certainly career inventories that might lead you to an idea, might something you might want to, you know, look for a job in. Um, there's also a good website, mymajors.com, that actually leads you to, um, you know, uh, you know, figure out based on skill sets and interests what kind of major you might, you know, uh, pursue, but what jobs that creates. Um, so, you know, I, I, I've. I've never had a kid who wanted to find a job who didn't find one. It, it's again, it's initiative and it's making time and it's being careful, right? Like making sure before you walk in that you've practiced with somebody, like how do you ask to speak to a manager or how do you ask for an application? And then what is that follow-up? Like do the role play as a parent with a kid, you know, like be behind the kitchen counter. Okay. Like you're going to walk in the back door and you're going to come up to me and we're going to have this interaction. Uh, or if there's something that's done electronically, they submit it, you know, and you don't hear anything, it, you know, is there a follow-up? Is there an email? Is there a way for you to, you know, put yourself out there? And, and I do think that because sadly, I think so few of our kids are doing that, that the ones who are doing it are meeting with success. It makes sense. I, I'd love you to actually walk us through like how you'd use Google because we're hearing that word initiative actually go out and go get it. But how do you go search for it? Because we got a bunch of questions around folks who are saying like, I'm interested, my kid's interested in the arts or a job in healthcare or film or computer science or whatever it might be. How would you actually jump onto Google and look for those opportunities? Uh, in that situation, I probably, I mean, you could do paid work um, for high school students in you know, the arts, you know, and something could pop up. Right. But like, you know, I, I think one example is if for summer programs, you know, if you had somebody who had an interest in, you know, potential veterinary science, right. Like you could do summer programs for high school students, um, you know, interested in veterinary science and there, you know, there, there's, there's a simple Google search, right. Nine programs for veterinary aspirants and then things will pop up and you've got these, you know, different summer programs and, and some of them have different specifications, right? Like there's a gator vet camp there, but here's a, here's, but it, and it doesn't seem to have any parameters around who can apply, but then here's a vet step program where only minority students with three O can apply. So some of the things you'll find, um, and you can click on them and, and, you know, it'll usually take you into their applications or give you more information about their program. Um, so you can type in summer opportunities. You can also type in, like virtual internship opportunities for high school students or in-person 
internship opportunities. And I, if I'm in the, because I'm in the DC metro area, I have my kids or I help them and type in, you know, in-person uh, internships for high school students in Northern Virginia, because that's sort of the metro area. And what pops up is lots of different things. And sometimes you could even, you can sometimes get more detailed and say computer science, but sometimes that will give you a smaller pool of things to choose from, right? So sometimes if you just start broader, you'll see different things pop up. And some things you'll see, you wouldn't think to Google. So sometimes just paid jobs um, for high school students in a town. You could put a town in there. You could put a, um, a county in there. Um, that's sort of always been, um, I mean, I have to laugh because I remember doing a presentation when I was at Chantilly and we had a rep from a, a prestigious school and uh, one of the kids asked a question um, about something at the school and the response was, she literally picked up her phone and was like, this thing called Google? <laughs> I think that, that the answer was just one step away. And again, it seemed was it was kind of like, mm, ouch, or matter of factly, we forget, right? I mean, we forget, we think things are harder than they are. No, it's a, it, it's a good point there. And, and Luis, I want to turn to you because we got a bunch of questions around how to interview, how to think about recommendations. Like there's all sorts of things that frankly can go for both jobs and college and so forth. So I'm, I'm just sort of curious, like start with the top level of that interview tips for students, frankly, both for getting a job, uh, but also I'm sure a lot of folks are thinking about the admissions side of this as well. I would say the number one thing that you can do um, with interviewing is come with more questions than basic questions you than basic answers you can find online. Um, you know, for jobs, uh, what is expected uh, of a successful sales rep here? You know, if you're going into retail, or um, what customer service skills exactly are you looking for for someone being a cashier at uh, you know District Taco? I, I too live in the DMV area, so for me, um, understanding the job opportunities there is, is grand. When it comes to college, coming in with questions that you can't find on our website, right? Uh, so what I'm trying to say is you, you've got to do a little bit of digging, right? You've, you've got to be um, proactive in, in, in really finding questions to ask, uh, especially for the college interview. For the job interview, it's more so um, what does that manager see as a successful um, candidate for that job? I think that's the number one question you can ask. Uh, and, and develop, and for my parents on the line or, or that are watching, you've been through enough interviews that you can ask those questions to, to your to your children, right? Um, maybe, you know, what are your biggest strengths um, and, and really developing two to three strengths that you see in your student and helping develop that answer for them. Uh, and then obviously the, the basic skill of coming in um, dressed, not, you don't have to come in a shirt and tie, but definitely, come in in a shirt that doesn't have holes, right? Or, or jeans that don't have holes and, and things like that. The basics that we forget a little bit because we've been behind the screen for so long that we just forget that, hey, sometimes a collared shirt, even if it's a polo, is just as good as a shirt and tie, especially for your first summer job where you will most likely be in public where you don't have to wear that shirt and tie, right? So, but I would also remind students, especially when you're looking at a summer job, do understand that your first job is not supposed to be glamorous and um, beautiful and, and easy to go to, you know? So I, I will say, make sure that you have uh, an understanding of what that first job can actually be and, and don't set high expectations that it's going to be this glamorous job that you're going to love every day. So, Luis, this, this question came in um, from, from uh, someone, uh, which is a, a sort of a different twist on, on the question we've been talking about around internship versus job, et cetera, et cetera. And it's uh, for, for college admissions officers, which carries more weight, a recommendation from an employer or a recommendation from a teacher? How do you think about that? I think of it in a sense of where, where and how they're describing, right? A teacher is going to describe who you are in the classroom, your perseverance, uh, your work ethic, um, your leadership in the sense of, uh, 
initiating conversation about the topic or always raising your hand to answer a question. An employer is going to answer a little bit differently or, or write that letter of recommendation a little bit differently in, in who you are in, in the face of uh, the public. Like, how do you respond to um, a little bit of chaos, right? Um, how do you uh, take on responsibility when given to you, et cetera? Um, is there one that weighs more than the other? I wouldn't say so. I, I, I would, I'm a firm believer in that letters of recommendations are supposed to help add these attributes to who you are as a person so that when we're reading you, you, you read as a full individual and not um, an individual that qu we're questioning about your perseverance or your leadership sk skills um, because we didn't see anything in your activities list. But you know I would I mean? add to that, read the fine print because some colleges are going to tell you we require a teacher yeah, and we require a counselor and then that's it. Or maybe we require a teacher or up to two teachers and you can do an outside, which would be an employer. So make mm -hmm. sure you read the fine print because if they request specifically a teacher and then they allow for something additional, that's great. But you can't send an employer if their one requirement is a teacher. No, that's a great point. And I think the through line also, right, is, is obviously follow the directions, but mm -hmm. then showing, you know, having someone write who can attest to these other parts of who you are as an individual and, and a characteristic. This isn't, and you know, Luis, you can confirm this, the, the, the admissions officers I talk to, they don't want you to fabricate who you are. They want to learn who you are, your authentic self. Correct. Uh, and see, is this the right fit for you on both sides of the equation? Um, I'm curious though, because I, there's a sense, at least in the world that I inhabit, that the focus of applicant pools uh, have have shifted a little bit over time. That there, that there may be this trend towards students being more focused on career and their profession after college, uh, when when they enter even than they were ten years ago. How much truth is there to that, and 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 what's the implication of that? I think that truth was developed by parents um, as opposed to colleges. <laughs> I I have, you know, yes, we tout graduation rates, et cetera. Um, and most colleges do tout a, a graduation rates when, when they have super high graduation rates. But um, if you look at the true, I guess, mission behind education is not just developing you academically, but also developing you as a person, right? Um, as a good human being. Um, I'm a 90s kid, so Boy Meets World was my thing, right? And I always recalled Mr. Feeney in the final episode saying, go out and do good, right? Not just do well, but do good. Uh, and that's what colleges want. We want our students to go be great people, be global citizens, make impacts on their world uh, or in their world based on what they learned academically, whether it be through engineering and you are, become part of a firm that's developing the next type of prosthetic leg, or um, you studied humanities and you are now in a opportunity at a policy firm to, to change policy. Uh, so I would say that go to college to do good, be a good person. And then I promise you, you will find a profession that you fall into that you will be able to do that and use your education. with it. And, and I would add to that because I've, I've seen this trend. I mean, I just, you know, 30 years in public education. And that is that there was this trend to move away from the arts and into career technical education courses. Um, and, and I know Luis would, would, would concur that, we love kids. They love kids who did marching band for four years or they were in theater and they were in choir and they never had time um, or they did theater and choir and could take one less AP in their schedule per year from some of their peers. But what you gain from that experience, I mean, talk about collaboration and marching band, talk about commitment, talk about time management, talk about, I mean, you know, you, you can go on and on and on. Putting together a theater production is it's uh, it's off the charts when you get everything from hair and makeup and lights and and sets and and you know s developing the sets and and learning lines. I mean, I, I just I, I would just I would caution parents if you have a kid who loves the arts, digital arts, fine arts, photography, please don't push them outside of that once they get to high school, thinking that marketing course or a business course is going to put better position them for college admissions because it's absolutely not true. And that's, uh, I think both of you have great sentiments to end this conversation on 
uh, right there as we wrap up with a lot of wisdom. And, and what I hear ultimately is don't run from who you are as the child and have your child show the initiative, not you as the parent, uh, to really developing themselves and, and putting their authentic self uh, forward ultimately. And, and so Luis, Robin, just tremendous gratitude and thank you uh, for helping us think through uh, these sets of questions around how to use the summer. Super appreciative. Uh, for all those of you tuning in, uh, make sure to uh, check out the uh, uh, chat. There's a uh, companion guide there linked uh, to the conversation that we've had this evening that you can check out and, 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 uh, and, and, and uh, read through. And a reminder that our next CGN live career show is February 9th, and we're going to dig into a spicy topic of artificial intelligence, AI, and how it's disrupting the future of work and get into the, some of those implications that Robin was just uh, alluding to there around what is actually valued. And as always, please provide your feedback on today's episode with the survey that you'll see in the chat. And by filling it out, uh, you'll be entered into a drawing to receive a $50 Amazon gift card. And if you want to share this episode, a link will be sent out next week and, and share it widely. And for all of you tuning in, Robin, Luis, just thank you so much. And I hope you all have a great day, great evening, and appreciate you all. Thank you for watching CGN Live Career, Make the Summer Work for You from College Guidance Network. We'd love to get your feedback about this episode in a brief survey. By filling out the survey, you'll have the chance to win a $50 Amazon gift card. For the counselors in our audience, CGN School is the first video library for you to build capacity with your families, featuring only nationally recognized college and career experts with content translated into multiple languages. We've dropped a link to a brief video in the chat. See and hear directly from counselors who are now letting good content do more of the work. Go to collegeguidancenetwork.com to request a demo. We hope you'll join us for our two-part college kickoff for 11th graders and their families. On January 26th, we'll have a panel discussion to get you ready for the college exploration ahead. And on February 2nd, we'll look at the very important affordability aspect of that discussion. We hope you'll register for both events at collegeguidancenetwork.com. Today's discussion will be posted to share with your friends and colleagues later this week with caption translations in several languages. Thanks again for watching and good night from College Guidance Network.